morning. Welcome to Web of Stories. My name is Melinda and I am here with my weekly vlog, my reading vlog, my reading wrap up. Um, I was hoping to film this outside today, but um, I got ready to do it and the lawn, my neighbor's like yard crew came in. You may still be able to hear them. So if you hear weird like grinding and that's, that's them. Um, I know this is a really boring view and my yard, if I position the camera right so you don't see the cleaning mess is actually quite nice. <laughs> so not this time, but anyway, I wanted, you will see some clips of my yard in this reading vlog. It's not just reading. Um, anyway, uh, I will let you get to it. And then at the end, I will kind of put today's little vlog-ish thing in and uh, wrap up my week. So enjoy the vlog. Where are we, Chris? Are you not talking? People haven't seen you for a while. They wanted to see you again. <laughs> He's ticklish. We're at Lowe's because we have to get some lettuce seeds. Um, I tried to do all this on last night. My husband was being difficult. So I'm here with Chris who's hiding from the camera. Say hi. <laughs> but we're going to get some lettuce seeds and maybe look around some more. We'll see. It's gardening time of the year and I don't know how to garden. So this is an adventure in gardening. Chris, are we learning about local history? I don't know. Oh, he's being very cooperative. So, so just so you know, we are in the Home Depot and Lowe's parking lot. And over there is an animal shelter. And over here, behind there is a Wendy's. But this site right here was the site of the poorhouse in Washington County. It was actually a state hospital, um, but the bottom floor was for the poorhouse. It was more like a nursing home. Oh, look, someone did a graffiti. Um, I was talking to some people at my church last week or the week before who lived there all, their, all their lives in this area and they were telling about how things had changed and they were telling me uh, that this used to be where the poorhouse was. So I was talking about the poorhouse. And the sign's kind of hard to read. I wish they had done that a little bit better. But um, yeah, so uh, yeah, we just thought we would come by and see this because we have a few minutes to kill before we have to go pick up our pizza at Papa Murphy's. So I thought we'd have an educational moment. Today is Sunday, May 28th. I'm with Chris again. We've been working hard. What have we been doing? Shoveling. We've been planting some things. So we've planted, we, in grow bags. Let me see if I can turn it so you can see. They're over there. We lined up. We only have three so far, but we're growing. What are we growing? Um, radishes. Radishes. Um, lettuce. Lettuce. Carrots. Carrots. And most importantly of all of them, catnip well yes we're doing catnip but that's not for us <laughs> that's for the cat there's there's two other things we're planting do you know what we're going to plant we haven't planted them today do you know potatoes what they, potatoes and what else tomatoes no we're gonna do some green onions just because i found we had some found we had some seeds and we use green onions when we make egg roll bowl which we're having for dinner tonight yeah, it's the only thing we have ready to go so anyway we've been working hard they're the only ones who've been in this house who've been working hard on this. But we've been working hard. Um, we're definitely going to need more dirt. My husband seemed to think we had like mountains and mountains of compost. And we don't. We're pretty much done with our compost already. So we're going to have to buy more dirt. More um, dirt. And bags. It's easier to shovel. What did we find in the compost? Uh, we found a snail. We found snail, a snail and worms. And what else did we find? Headshots. And what else did we find? Sock. Yes, we found one of his socks in our compost i don't know how that happened but yeah me neither there you go <laughs> anyway it's not super exciting right now but probably in vlogs to come you will see uh growth uh little growth updates on our our veggies talk to you later what what you, you, you should take a picture of me behind the door. apparently i have to take a picture of him behind the growth bag so i'm going to sign off now so we're back out here. Chris is watering our blueberries and strawberries, but I have to show you this. Last year, I think it was last year, my husband, against advice of absolutely everybody, decided to plant one mint plant directly into the ground. Here is that mint plant now. It will be taking over our yard, which is what everybody told him, but he didn't listen. But if you want mojitos, once I figure out how to make a mojito or a mint julep or whatever, we got the mint for you. They're hiding. <laughs> we have a little get together. There's one. Hi. There's the other. Where are we going? Pals. Pals. We 
we are at Salt and Straw. This is my first time here because I just found out there's one near Powell's. I have salted malted chocolate chip cookie dough. What kind do you have? Cinnamon snickerdoodle. What kind do you have? Freckle, freckle mint chocolate chip. And I was going to do a little book haul with everything we got, but we're too busy eating ice cream. So maybe in the next video. Okay, ice cream has been consumed. Um, please ignore the children running through the splash pad, but it's Memorial Day weekend. This is what I got. Bought too many, but that's okay. So the first is The Angel of Room by Jess Walter. I really like Jess Walter. Um, this actually does not count towards my TBR because I have an audiobook version of this that's already on there. So um, it doesn't change my own book count. And then I got A Thousand Shifts by Natalie Haynes. Um, reading this, if I like it and I think it's appropriate, I'll hand it on to Lily because she likes her Greek mythology stuff. This is a book, The Chestnut Man. <laughs> They're excited. The Chestnut Man that's been on my TBR for a while um, and it was on sale. This is a used copy. It was on sale, so pick that up. And then my daughter said, hey mom, there's a whole table of swashbuckler stories. So I had to, I went over there and I found this one. The Sea Queen, which is like Viking pirates. That sounded good, so I picked that up. And then just today, I was um, commented on Jennifer Loves Books on her post about, I didn't know what I was gonna read for June, what my pride book for June would be. And then at Powell's, they had a display for local authors. So I got Body Grammar. This one will fit for pride, and it's also a local author. And I'll show you what my daughter got. This was her swashbuckler book. A friend of mine read this and really liked it. So it's exciting to see my daughter pick it up. And then she got two assassination classroom books. Don't know what to think about it, but apparently the band, so you know, yay. A uh, Momo, another manga. And then I actually bought this for them. She has to share it with her brother, but uh, the new, that's a uh, school trip, which is the next of the new kid books. So that was our book haul from Pals. It's Monday evening, kids are back there. We just ate outside, first time this year, hasn't it? Um, I planted a bunch of stuff. See those brown, well there's two. The two bags right there, those are catnip for the cat. And then back there I have carrots, radishes, green onions, spinach, and lettuce. Although I don't, I don't think lettuce is gonna work. I don't think that we had enough dirt in it and I, I don't know, but I only had one packet of lettuce. So I'm gonna have to buy some more lettuce, I think. And we bought four bags of dirt and I'm down to less than two bags now. And potatoes are still to come. So whole backyard, it's gonna be a lot of black bags back there. But the good thing about radishes, so I'm gonna plant some more next weekend. I, where's my camera? This <laughs> Next weekend. And then um, I'll plant more the weekend after that. But then the first ones I planted should be ready to harvest so that I can just reuse that bag and that dirt. So once you get the radish thing going, that's good. Oh, the cat's out there too. She's having supervised outdoor time. My husband mowed the lawn. He picked some, some strawberries, but I think, I think my daughter's already eaten them. <laughs> but he's over here. Oop, there he is, there he is. And he's relighting the fire so we can have s'mores. Cause it's not Memorial Day weekend without s'mores even if we did have salt and straw earlier today. Um, reading wise, I haven't talked about reading. I've just talked about my yard and what I'm oh, sorry. I, <laughs> I need a selfie stick or something, <laughs> yard. I finished The Crane Husband. So, you know, all during Mental Health May, I'm like accidentally reading books of fit Mental Health May, but I didn't think I would do that for Horror Mayhem. But Crane Husband, that one's horror. I mean, it's not scary but it's spooky, but it was good. I kind of feel like there's a lot of subtext I didn't get. It's like the kind of story you would read and like write an academic paper on kind of story, although it was good. Um, but yeah, so now I am, I was gonna start The Uncommon Reader by Alan Bennett. Um, I think Priscilla at Evening Reader recommended that and I had it out from the library, but then it like expired and renewed, but my Kobo wouldn't pick up the new renewal. So I had to just kind of return it and have to wait for a hold slot to fill up, to open up, and then I can check it out again. Oh, and there's a bunch of smoke coming this way. <laughs> Look at my daughter, she's like, Ooh. <laughs> oh, she doesn't want to be on camera. <laughs> so um, I'm just gonna stick with the books that I have, which is East of Eden, which I'm really enjoying. That's really good. I think I might be a, a become a Steinbeck girl. Um, Murmur of Bees, I still have to do my day's reading of that. 
Um, and I'm hoping to finish other terrors by the end of the month. That's kind of my goal. So we'll see. I don't have that much more to go. So anyway, that's what's going on. Um, I'm going to have s'mores momentarily and you can't do anything else when you're eating s'mores. So I'm going to hang this up. Hello everyone. It is Wednesday, May 31st. And this is my second time trying to do this vlog entry because the first one was a hot mess. Like it was just everything going wrong. Anyway, makeup on. That means I'm going to be doing videos today. Um, I'm going to do a tag video for next week um, because I think I finished everything I'm going to finish in May. I'll do my May wrap up with my look ahead to June. Um, and I'm not sure if that's going to be two different videos or not. We'll have to wait and see. And then, um, yeah. So um, I do have a spicy opinions video that I have now uh, done two filmings of. Neither one has turned out great. <laughs> so I don't know if I'm going to give up with it or try again. Um, sorry, this is like, I'm holding the um, I did want to say I finished this book yesterday. This is um, Other Terrors, an inclusive anthology. It is a horror short story collection. I read it for Horror Mayhem. I highly recommend this. I gave it four stars, which is kind of what I give every kind of short story collection, except for the one I gave five stars to. Um, it's got a lot of different authors. Some I had heard of, some I had not heard of. Um, so I got to, I got to meet a bunch of new authors. So that's fun. I enjoy reading horror because it generally just is creepy, not scary to me, usually, unless it's Stephen King. Um, so I liked finding new authors. There was one story in particular I was interested in reading, and that was the one by S.A. Crosby, because S.A. Crosby's not a horror writer. And I thought, well, the hell's this going to go? And I, I've never read any short stories from him. I've only read his novels. I will tell you, it was very good. This guy could write horror really well. It was a good horror story, and it was also very S.A. Crosby. So I thought that was great. Um, it's towards the end, so if you ever pick, th pick that up, you just want to read that story, that's where it is. But I recommend reading the other stories too. You know, they kind of vary in quality and vary in different subject, but that's what you get when you have an anthology like that. Anyway, uh, I have a couple errands to run after my daughter goes to school, and then I will do some viewing. So I will see you later today. Hello, today is Thursday, June 1st. We're in June. Woohoo! Um, I can't. I know we say that every month, but whatever. It's June 1st. Um, I am not going to talk about books today because I don't really have any book stuff. But I wanted to talk a little bit about television. So last night, my husband and I watched the final episode of Ted Lasso. And uh, ugly sobbing from me, like through the whole thing. Um, not sad, just, you know, ending kind of stuff. Um, I'm not going to spoil anything. This, the, Ted Lasso is not the point of this. I wanted to tell you about another show. So I had never heard of the show until I believe yesterday when I saw um, a post from Jennifer Weiner, the author Jennifer Weiner, saying, if you need something for your Ted Lasso hangover, check out Somebody Somewhere. Um, it's on what was HBO. It's now Max. Um, it's it, This show's fantastic. I've never heard of it. So it, the setup is it stars... I think the actress's name is Bridget Everett. And um, this is sort of autobiographical because the character Sam, that's the main character, um, before the show begins, she has returned to her hometown of Manhattan, Kansas. That's actually Bridget Everett's hometown. Um, she's returned to her hometown of Manhattan, Texas to take care of her older sister who is dying. Um, her sister has died. She's still there. Um, because she didn't really have a life to go back to wherever she, I don't, I think they said she was in Lawrence, Kansas. I don't know. She doesn't really have a life there to go back to. So she's still in her hometown of Manhattan, Kansas. That's where the show begins. So the older sister has already died. <sighs> Sam is not a happy person. She doesn't feel like she belongs anywhere. She, her life is not where she thinks it should be. And she is really grieving her sister. She was very close to her sister. Um, so into this, she, her family's there. She has a younger sister um, who is either perfectly bitter or bitterly perfect, one of the two. Um, but she has a lot of anger towards Sam. Um, the, the, what I have figured, I've only watched, I think, three or four episodes. So um, I can't spoil anything if I tried. And I don't really know everything that's going on. So I'll just tell you kind of what I understand. It, it seems like the younger sister is was always jealous of the two older sisters. So Sam's the middle, and then the the oldest sister has died, um, and she was always left out. I kind of understand that with with children of three. Um, it was reasons like that why I only have two kids. <laughs> Our plan was to have three, and then we said, nope, two's good, two is good. Um, 
So I, I do understand that dynamic, but then there's also the issue that the older sister had been gay and it doesn't sound like the younger sister approved of that. So there was that issue too. Um, the younger sister seems to have it all together. She has a daughter, a teenage daughter. The daughter is very close to Sam and the sister is very jealous of that. So there's a lot of weird family stuff going on there. Um, their parents are both there. Their mother is an alcoholic and their father is very much in denial about his wife's uh, condition. The father seems to be a very sweet guy. He's played by um, the same guy. It took me a long time to play some, but it's the same guy who played the like super in Friends. Um, this might be a little bit of a spoiler, but I don't know because I haven't seen, so I don't know. I'm, it's an inadvertent spoiler. It's not, it's whatever. This actor is deceased, so I'm sure at some point the father will be at some point. Anyway, um, anyway, she's back in her hometown and she has a job. And in this job, she meets this person that she went to school with, um, but she didn't remember him. Um, but he was always a big fan of her. She was a very accomplished singer. They were in a show choir together. And they become really good friends. Um, and he is a very interesting character. He's, um, he's gay, but he's also very religious. And he's just creating his world as it is in this little town in Kansas. The show is like everything. It has, it, it is a good post Ted Lasso show, at least for me. Ted Lasso had its dark moments, but it also was pretty much a warm fuzzy show. And it was, it, there was an element of silliness to it. And that's all wonderful. Um, I will say there's not really an element of silliness to this. Um, the darker moments are more pronounced. There is a lot of grief. There's a lot of dealing with family stuff. Um, that goes on in it, but it's still the kind of sweet, sweet story and sweet humor that I, I got from Ted Lasso. Um, and I'm really enjoying it. So if you have access to Max or HBO and you are looking for a post Ted Lasso show, um, first of all, if you haven't seen Ted Lasso, you should see Ted Lasso because that show's awesome, but it's also over now. <laughs> Unless they spin it off with another character, which I hope they do. Like any character, except maybe Nathan any character I will watch. <laughs> um, but no, if you're looking for something else, look up somebody somewhere. Um, it's just, it's so good. It is so good. I've never, it's in its second season. I had never heard of this show. <laughs> never heard of it. Oh, the other thing about this show is um, if you watch a lot of American TV and British TV, you really notice this about American television because on British television, the, the actors look like humans. And on American TV shows, generally the actors are the perfect ideal of what we think beauty is. So skinny and all of this stuff. And, and if they aren't, then that's like the butt of the joke or it says something about their character or something like that. That's not the case with the show. They're just like any of these people you would see in Manhattan, Kansas, if you went there. <laughs> and... They are, and it's really diverse. There's, there are gay characters. There's at least one trans character. Um, there's a a little bit of racial diversity. I, I'm not really knocking the show for that because I, th I think that, you know, it's hard. It is hard because you want there to be racial diversity in shows, but this show is set in a place where there isn't a lot of racial diversity. And I think the, the amount that they have is reflective of the town. So, while most of the characters in this show are white, I, I'm not going to hold that against it because they do great on other <laughs> other uh, scales of diversity. Um, it's just, it's just, I love the show. So please check out, check that out if you have the the ability, the opportunity to check out somebody somewhere on Max. So that's that. Um, I am retaping the videos that I did yesterday because I watch them and they're a hot mess. Um, I need to work on not being so scatterbrained, but still being myself uh, when I do videos. It's fine to be a little scatterbrained in these sort of log ones because they're very much, cats running around, <laughs> very much off the off the cuff. But these other ones, yeah, they were a mess. I, I don't, I did, wouldn't feel comfortable putting them out there. So I'm gonna try and retape them. I'm gonna do my best to be myself, but also not seem, oh, ah out there. But anyway, I'm going to go ahead and do that because then I want to go read for a while. So talk to y'all later. Okay. So that was my week. Um, the only thing I'll add is last night, my daughter and I went to the middle school to see 
their musical production. My daughter is very into drama, but she's not a singer. And she also was feeling stressed with um, her, the math class she's taking this this year. Not that the, I don't think it's the math itself that's stressing her out, but it's the way the class, it's an online class. And uh, her middle school has not been accommodating for the kids who are taking these online classes. It's a whole thing. But anyway, she wasn't in it. So this is the first time I've been able to go to the school play with her instead of to see her. And that was fun. Um, they did Into the Woods Junior, which that is the first act of Into the Woods. And then um, they change a couple things to make it kid appropriate. <laughs> Um, I, if you're not a musical person, Into the Woods is my favorite Sondheim musical. It's the first act is kind of uh, fairy tales, mostly fairy tales that we know. There's Cinderella, Jack and the Beanstalk, Rapunzel, Little Red Riding Hood. And then there's another one about a baker and his wife that's kind of added in to tie everything together. And then the second act, which they do not do because it's Into the Woods Jr., is um, like what happens happily ever after. Um, earlier this year, so like after... I don't know, like February or something, February or March, we went to see um, the high school production of Into the Woods, which was the whole thing. And they did a really, really good job of it. When I was in college, I was part of a light opera company and um, I wasn't in the production, but they did Into the Woods and it was not good. <laughs> so I was a little scared of that one, um, of the high school one, because of, I've seen the college production, but the high school one was really good. I mean, it's still, it's a school production. So you have, you know, you have the performers who are ready for Broadway and you have the performers who are clearly just the people from choir they pulled in to fill the roles, <laughs> but whatever. My expectations for Into the Woods Junior were a little different because I knew it was a middle school. Um, their theater is basically, they're like common. So their cafeteria area has bad acoustics. You sit in uncomfortable chairs. It's a middle school. It's fine. Um, they did, apparently, I think they did mic the kids this time. So that was good. Um, and my daughter's friends with a lot of people in the cast, so it was fun to see them. Um, there was this one really weird part, though. Um, it has nothing to do with the kids, but the teacher, the director of the play decided this is a one-act musical, right? Because it's only the first act of Into the Woods. But he decided to put an intermission in it, and I think he just chose, like, as close to the middle as he could. So it wasn't really a point that made sense to put a break. There are other points in that one act where you could put a break but this one didn't make any sense it was just like in the middle and there wasn't any announcement and their lighting it's their lighting situation is not optimal because again it's like their commons it's just it's a junior high it's fine <laughs> anyway so it's like we didn't know what was going on but like they're doing some time and then all of a sudden they started playing like tears for fears and fine young cannibals and i was so confused <laughs> It's like my daughter's like, I think that's an intermission. Like, ah, uh, I that makes sense. I wish they had told me. But anyway, it was it was fun, and um, I'm glad I saw it, and that I don't have to see it again. <laughs> but my my daughter's friends were actually really amazing. I will say that they were really good. I was so proud of them, and I can't wait to watch them in high school to see how they grow doing high school productions. Um, so that was that. It's a beautiful day in Oregon, and as I said, I wanted very much to share it with you, um, but I can't because neighbor's yard crew's out, so <laughs> there you go. Oh, I forgot. Good morning. And you can't see it because my tripod thing, but my shirt says, in all of history, it's never the good guys banning books, and I'm going to wear this out in public today, not to the library. Oh, that's another thing. I had a library story from yesterday. So yesterday was June 1st, which is like the summer reading kickoff. And I, of course, go to the library to like sign up for adult summer reading because I've never grown up apparently and I love summer reading. And they didn't have adult summer reading ready. No, they didn't have the, they didn't have the bingo sheets ready. So I didn't get it. I had to leave empty handed, but I'm going to go back tomorrow and get them and see if I can maybe entice my daughter to at least sign up. But we'll see. Um, I do think like I kind of, this, I did this whole thing where like, I don't think, I'm not going to force you to do it, but I also know that wider participation reflects well on the library and can lead to greater funding. So I do want them to participate for that reason. So I'll talk to my kids and see if I can talk them into it and say, look, you just have to sign up and then you get a free book. And you're doing mom's summer reading where you get like gift cards and video games <laughs> and you could just transfer it over. It's all easy, but we'll see. We'll see how that goes. Anyway, my reading week. I finished three things this week. So 
A lot of this you will see covered in my May wrap up, which will be up tomorrow if I get all the tech working right. Um, so the first two I finished in May. So um, the one first one was The Crane Husband by Kelly Barnhill. I went into this thinking it was a fantasy novella. It's a horror novella. Um, it didn't scare me, but it was definitely creepy. And I, yes, I counted it for horror mayhem. Um, it's very, I don't, I mean, I enjoyed it. It was effective. I don't think I got everything I could out of it. I think this is something I'm gonna have to reread again in the future. I feel like this is the kind of novella that would be taught in a college class for like English majors to like tear apart and talk about all the symbolism kind of thing. Um, but it was good. I recommend it. I don't recommend it as an entry to Kelly Barnhill. She has written a lot of middle grade and YA, I think, books, which I've not read, although my daughter has. But she did write another adult book called When Women Were Dragons that came out last year that I love. So I would actually recommend starting with that one and not The Crane Husband, even though The Crane Husband is much shorter. And then I finished Other Terrors, an inclusive anthology, which I had been reading all of May, um, and I really enjoyed it. It's great. Um, you know, I read it as part of Horror Mayhem, but if you are a spooky season reader, put this on your list for October because it was just a fun way to read lots of little horror stories. And... Um, and be introduced to some new horror writers. So I really appreciated that. And I'm glad I read it. Um, those were, oh, I should check my ratings. Um, okay, so I gave a B plus to The Crane Husband and an A to Other Terrors, which is not surprising because short story collections almost always get A's from me. And then last, yesterday, I finished The Murmur of Bees by Alice Segovia. I still have my library book because my library discussion is tomorrow morning. And uh, I really enjoyed this one. I was apprehensive. I'm not an insect fan. I'm also no longer a crane fan, but it's another story. <laughs> um, not an insect fan. Didn't want to read a lot about bees. There are bees in this book. Nothing gross and not too much bees. It's just such a beautiful, beautifully written, lovely story about two brothers and uh, living your life. And oh, it's just so good. I love this book. Um, so this is The Murmur of Beasts by Sofia Segovia. I gave this an A+. Plus. This is an A+, plus book for me. It's my first book that I finished for June. And because I started it the day before um, Big Book Summer started, I couldn't put it off a day because I had to get it done by tomorrow. Um, I'm counting it for Big Book Summer. It's 461 pages. So first big book of Big Book Summer is done. There you go. As for what I'm reading now, let me pull up my Goodreads page because um, I'm reading too many. I think I have six things going at the moment. Now, whether I start something new today in print to take the place of Murmur of Bees, I'm not sure yet. I am not at this point going to uh, do a short story collection, um, even though I have plenty that I could choose from, but I'm not going to at this point do a short story collection to take the place of other terrors because I want to catch up on some other things. I may also do a read-along of The Inferno with one chaotic librarian. I ordered a book. I ordered a copy. Um, and we'll have to see if it if that's something I do. I'm going to look at it and see. Okay, so what I, am, what I do have in print right now is I have um, East of Eden, which I am doing as a read-along. So I have a schedule. I just stick to that schedule. So I will read it like my chunk today, and then I won't read it again till Monday because that's my chunk. Um, it, the book is in four parts and we're reading one part a week. So I'll be done with this like next Friday or Saturday. Um, and then I have two eBooks going. I have two eBooks, one on my Kindle, one on my Kobo. On my Kobo, I have One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, which I need to finish. That was for Mental Health May and I didn't, I just couldn't finish it. Um, but I am planning to finish it and I'm still going to do my Biblio adventure at some point in the near future, probably in June sometime. So stay tuned. And then on my Kindle, I have a NetGalley book um, that I need to finish because it's actually going to be published, I believe, on Tuesday. I think that's the date. It's called Bad Kids by Zijin Chen. Um, let me pull that up. I have my Goodreads here, so I'm peeking and see exactly when that's going to be published. So this is going to be interesting because it's one of those books that I can appreciate, but I don't think it's a book for me. <laughs> but I'm reading it just, just you know, I'm, I'm doing being a good reviewer and reading it. Um, so it's first published September 1st, 2014 in China. Yep, June 6th, it's gonna be published in the United States. So that is this coming Tuesday. And I wanna have a review up on my blog on Tuesday. I will probably do a video review on Monday-ish for it, because I already have a tag for Tuesday to do. Um, so I have that going. 
those are my two. And then on my cereal app, I am reading 12 Years a Slave. I'm a little behind, but that's fine. Um, this is a really good book. Like I've seen the movie, so I, I know the, the story. <laughs> and it's, it's a horrendous story. It's just heartbreaking, but it's a really well-written good book. And why am I not reading? Why didn't I read this in high school? You know, I have feelings about that. This would have been a better book than for the purpose that I was told I was supposed to be reading Huckleberry Finn. This would have been a better book. <laughs> So those are my electronic books. So a Kobo, a Kindle, and a Serial. Um, and then, oh, on audio, I am doing an audio reread of Clark and Division by Naomi Hirahara. I read that Hirahara, Hirahara, Naomi Hirahara. <laughs> um, I read this a year or two ago, whenever it came out. I really enjoyed it. I really loved it. And then my marginalized authors group picked it. And so I'm doing my audio reread of it. And you know, I, I'm liking the audio. I'm not, I'm not super fond of the narrator. She seems a little young and cutesy to me, but whatever. As I said, this is a reread of it for me. And then finally, and not that I have read it this book this month, but I have Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norell going on. And um, I'll get back to that one again. <laughs> right now I'm like, I probably am going to put that off until I finish East of Eden. I think once I finish East of Eden, I'll go back into Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell. So that's what I have for this week. We're going to put, uh, we're going to close the door on this week. And so anything else I take today will be for next week. In the meantime, thank you for being with me this week on my reading journey. Um, if you like this video, give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do so. And I will see you in the next video. Thank you so much.